Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another tech video. Now this is the 16th video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow. So in my last video, we have started the, our third section of the series and this is all about ServiceNow tables. We are going to learn about ServiceNow tables, field, field types, relationship of the table and finally we'll create custom tables and I'll show you how you can add fields and how you can configure different things, right? So in my last video, we have understood the concept of ServiceNow table, what are the tables, what are the different components of table, what are the data dictionary table and those three important tables that we have already learned, right? So we have discussed all these things in my last video, guys. So don't worry if you missed that video. I'm going to put the link in the description and also you can find the link right now here on your screen, right? So let's see what are the new thing we are going to learn about tables today. So today we are going to learn about the fields and field type, which is very, very, very important. So we have seen tables. We have seen incident table, problem table, change table, users table. There are so many different tables. And we are going to see today that how the fields of the table has been there and, you know, how we you can change the different types of the fields, you know, different types of the fields, right? So let's start. So right now we are in the service now personal developer instance. Okay. And now I'll show you. So in the last video, we have understood that the sys dictionary or this is underscore dictionary table that we have, which stores, uh, you know, the field, different fields and their types and each and everything, dictionary records, attributes, everything that stores on the sys dictionary table. So to access the field of a table or you know field types and changing things so we can directly go to the sys dictionary table so i'll show you uh, so there would be three ways by which we can access the fields in a table and i'll show you each one of them right so the first way would be dictionary so i'll type here um, so i'll type here the name of the table which stores the different field types so it's will be it would be sys underscore dictionary dot list right this is a table name and we have this says dictionary table now if i want to change any fields or if i want to add a field or maybe i want to see the field and field types of a particular table for an example incident then here we can directly search here do the filtration so i can search incident now you can see there are 44 different kind of fields and their type are mentioned here. You can see string, integer, collection, CSID. So suppose I want to change the uh, category or want to see the category, how category works. So I can do it by here, clicking here. So let me open in a new tab. So you can see this is the dictionary entry, right, of the category field. So what are the type of category? What are the column label, right, category and all the details we have. So this is one way we can uh, connect to the uh, field of incident. And the another way would be so we can go to the incident dot list or form view. And then we can just click on the column optional menu and from here we can go to the configure and go to the table this you have seen already in the last video how you can access the table so now we are seeing the incident uh, table things and here under column you can directly go to the category and you will have the same page right and the final way would be which is the most common and uh, you know uh, which is the most common way that uh, developer or the administrator interacts with the service now fields so that would be for an example you want to like again same example so i'll go to the incident dot form view here and from here i want to use see the category right so i'll click on the right click on the category here the name category label category let the page load it first yeah it's loaded now so i'll go to the right click here category and then i'll go to configure dictionary so by clicking on configure dictionary, you will directly open in the same page. So now you know in three different ways you can access or you can visit to the field of service now or the dictionary. You can access the dictionary of each of every field, right? So let me go back to the incident form again and let's see a few of the important fields I'm going to show you uh, how they work working right now and also i will create few more fields here and to show you how these are working okay so make sure again you watch the complete video all right so here first i will go to this field called caller and here first let me show you like here you can search any caller like able twitter i can maybe or i can choose app and it shows you the details of the users here and i can choose any of the user and also i can click the search button and i can choose any of the user 
for an example this user right and then we have a button here that shows the related incidents like on this username uh, what are the incidents that are logged and right now there are no incident here and then we also have the preview this record option where we see the record of this uh, users right their names and email id now let's understand how this field has been built so i'll click on right click here and go to the configure dictionary so i don't want to save it so here i am in the right now the dictionary field of the caller and you can see this is a reference field so we have many different field option that you can when you, once you create a field you will have different option so what are those option if i click on this uh, icon you will see what are the different types we have we have 37 different types so it can be a choice field color condition field field name uh, html field list field icon many things are there or you can directly create a normal string field here it's a reference field now what is a reference field reference field means you are using this field from a different table as a reference okay so this color field this color field is actually a field so this color field is actually a reference field which is using the data from the user table i told you right in the user table we have the different users details we have stored right so the details about any users let me open the incident form again So here in the caller field, we can see we can choose different user. If I click on the search button, you can see on the top, it is the users table from where all this data is coming. I hope reference field is very clear for you. So if I go down here, you can see reference specification where you can specify the details of the reference. So you can see reference is user. Now here also, let's see other field column name, caller ID. Now column name is again, it's same like a, you know, column label of table and the name of table so caller is the column label and the column name is caller underscore id again these things are used in a scripting right for developing stuff it's active field and you can also make, make it read only mandatory display now we have some attributes here and what are these attributes attributes are nothing but you can add these things to add more functionality on a form okay now you know you have seen that uh, Let's do one thing. Let's open the incident form in a new tab. So I'll do capital form. And you can see in the caller field, we have when you choose a caller, like let me choose Abel Tutor, I have this field to show related incident. So there has to be some functionality or some coding or scripting has to be written so that this field is visible, right? And that is written under the, you can see, this reference contribution user show incidents. Now you can say Pritam, how you can say that it's a like for this line, it is working. This is, so this is the macro, this call it the UR, UI macro. Just know this for the time being, you don't need to understand like how to create macro in the administrator course, definitely in the developer course, we will create macro and I'll show you. So the reference contribution name is show user show incidents, right? So if I just open UI, let's copy this thing, copy this name. And I will go to U, UI macros. And if you go to UI macros here, and if I search for it, the name, user show incident, you can see we have it. So if I open it, it just shows incident. So this is where it is written. The code is written. It is loading right now. So the, so the code is written here. And with the help of this code, you can see this is the scripting. With the help of this code, the list of the incident is showing, which is logged under the user called Abel Twitter, right? So this is a use of a attribute fields where you can, you know, first create a macro and then you can put the macro details in the attribute fields. So I'm back again in the dictionary and you can see, and once you, you know, mention attribute, you need to place, you need to give a comma here and then another attribute, you place it, right? Also, if I scroll down here in the bottom also, you can create attributes from here. You have a new button and you can create different attributes. All right. Now, that's the attribute fields. Um, then we have the any choice list specification. No, this is not a choice field. So we did not put any choice field. Is there any dependent field? So dependent means this field is, this scholar fields is dependent on the field company. So based on the company, the, you can choose the caller. 
For an example, there is a company ABC and there is a company XYZ. So if I choose company as ABC, I can only select users who are the part of the ABC company. And if I choose XYZ as a company, I can choose only the users who are the part of the XYZ company, right? So that's how the dependent field works. So I will, I'll show you more. So you will understand more de about dependent field in the category subcategory when I'll show you the dictionary fields, right? There you would be able to see and also the assignment group and assign to, okay? So these are the dictionary fields of caller. So let's go back, let's close this and let's now understand the category. Configure dictionary. So category is a string field. Okay, this is not a reference field. So this is a normally you can see, you can choose category. Again, I will, let me open the incident form. So you can see, so now you can see here category, if you click category, we have different categories like software, hardware, network. Now, if I choose any category, you know the subcategories, you know, going to different for each of this category. So for software, I have email and operating system. Okay. And for hardware, if I choose hardware, then you can see we have, we can, you can see we have different options like CPU, disk, keyboard, memory, right? So based, so depend on the category field, the subcategory is changing. Now, if I open the dictionary value here, this is, we have the choice enabled here and we have different kind of choice here in query, software, hardware, whichever it is written. So right now I can add any new row here. Okay. And create another uh, category field. So for an example, let's do that. Let's create a new category. So it can be a uh, phone. Let's create a new category here, phone and let's save it. Okay. So now we have a new category called phone. Okay. Let is, let's mention this, the value also phone. I need to mention the value and let's not choose any sequence. Let's save it. And now let's go here in the incident form. I'll reload the form here. I'll click on leave. And now here, if I choose the category, you can see I have a new category called phone, right? So this is how simply you can create category. So now let's go to the subcategory dictionary field. And you see based on the category, subcategory is changing. Now how it is changing? Again, it's a string field. Now if I scroll down here, you can see there is a dependent field category. So based on the category, subcategory is changing. But where you are defining it? In the choices. Now you can see we have 19 choices. But you can see here, the level is antivirus. This is a subcategory antivirus. Value is antivirus then it is dependent on the inquiry. So in the inquiry tab, we have the antivirus option. So if I go to the form view, so here again, if I choose inquiry, you can see we have the option called antivirus because the dependent value is inquiry here. For the same example, CPU. CPU is dependent value hardware. So under hardware, I can find CPU subcategory. You can see CPU is there, right? Isn't it pretty interesting? So now let's create a new one. We have created a phone, right? Category. So I want to give iPhone and let's put the value here, iPhone. And also I want to choose or give Android. And I want to put the value here, Android. All right. And the dependent field of Android category would be phone and for iphone also we are gonna choose phone so now i'm gonna save it and then when i'll reload it the incident form so if i go to the new category phone i have subcategory android and iphone so you see how you can create categories and subcategories in the incident form or any form you can do this type of field okay now for assignment group and assign to it is same again in the same way you can configure assignment group and assign all right uh, let's now for the channel also we have the choice field that would be same like category for state also we have different fields so you can again right click and just go to the configure dictionary to understand this now for the impact urgency and priority how these fields are configuring you can see we are changing the impact and urgency the priority is changing okay so these things i will explain you in the incident management process when we will understand what is the use of priority what does it mean okay and different things like sla so there we will see how this priority field is configuring okay and we'll understand the dictionary value in that time all right 
so this is how you can check the dictionary value dictionary uh, field dictionary of each and every fields right uh, in any form not only incident form you can see in the problem also in the change form right so now let's quickly i'm going to create new fields here so for that for creating a new field i can go to the configure and table view again let's open the incident form let's make it a normal uh, simple string field so i'll go to the incident table here and here i'll click on new to create a new field so i'll choose the stripe string type string and the label would be maybe um, your channel name so just uh, it's coming my youtube channel so your channel name that's a label column name would be automatic so this is a name again you can use in script so the length of the field would be 100 uh, this is not only mandatory or something so normal that's it so submit it and now if i go to the my incident form and if i reload the form and you can see i have a field called incident i'm field called your channel name right now i can configure this field again go to the dictionary configure dictionary and here let's make some default value mentioning enter your channel name okay then update and now i will go to the show form so it will show me the incident form here and now i can see in the default value in the channel name we have the enter your channel name so it's just like a guiding user what you need to write okay so i can put information here while creating the incident so maybe take with pre and i can you know put this information and i can save the ticket so you can see how we can create a new field, a dictionary field, how you can add a new field in here. And we have seen different field types like integer, like wherever it's case of numbers, like the impact urgency, we will use integer. Wherever there is a choice field, we can choose store it in a string and then we can add choice field here. So let's quickly create a choice field. So let's do that. So I'll go to the again incident table, create a new. I will load the advanced view. Okay, first I have to mention a type. So let's choose it as a string. And column label would be choose your channel. Column name would be automatic. And max length would be 100 again. You can mention 30, 40 also. And let's save it first. So it is created. Now I'm going to go to the advanced view. So that I can apply or create choice fields. So now in the choice, I have nothing. So I'm going to add choice first, maybe. So any channel name, maybe let's put it on discovery. Let's put TV channel name. Uh, let's, okay, it is fine. Let's choose Netflix. Let's create the final one, Amazon Prime. Okay. Okay, so I did not put any value here. So Amazon Prime Discovery. Netflix. All right, and now I'm going to save it. So here we have to mention a choice type. So I'll click on drop down with none or the first option will, will be none from here if I choose it and let's update it and now i will go back to the incident form and i will reload the form and let's see now i have a choice field you can see i have a choice so i can choose amazon prime discovery netflix right so this is how you can create different type of field and also you can check the dictionary it is very very important guys to edit any of the fields on any existing table or you want to create a new table and insert new form which you're going to do in the last uh, video of this series last video of this section this is it for today guys we'll see you in the next video make sure you hit the like button if you like the video also comment if you have any comment and also don't forget to subscribe the channel and share with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people see you in my next video bye bye take care